TikTok CEO downplaying China-based workers' access to Americans' uh, user data in congress congressional testimony in March, testifying that U.S. data is used by engineers in China for business purposes, and the company has rigorous data access protocols, adding that much of the information is already public. But a new investigation from The New York Times appears to contradict that testimony. The Times reporting that uh, sensitive U.S. Uh, user data, including driver's licenses, addresses, and potentially illegal explicit material were regularly posted on an internal messaging system called LARC, which is similar to Slack between 2019 and 2022. According to the Times, thousands of employees, including some in China, had access to chat rooms and uh, the data were stored on Chinese servers as of late last year. Join us right now. Uh, one of the reporters behind that investigation, Sabna Meshwari, is here from The New York Times. Good morning. Good morning. So what's going on here? Who's telling the truth? Well, from what we've learned, uh, right. we received a trove of documents and, and talked to former and current employees, and we're told that there's a lot of concerns around how this user data was being shared on this messaging system internally. So the messaging system, to me, was a, an interesting sort of element to this, because I think a lot of people think, okay, is the data safe on the system itself, meaning the TikTok, TikTok itself, and they're obviously building this thing called Project Text, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, Project Texas, right? That, right. That's going to be supposedly on their own servers. But then I started to, when I realized that there's other elements of sort of how information gets shared, that, that even an internal messaging service might, might change that dynamic. Right. And I think what that reflects is, is just what a sprawling enterprise this is and this effort to separate TikTok and all of its U.S. data from uh, the ByteDance and Chinese right. organization. And so it almost seemed like... Um, a loophole to some of these employees, or, or sometimes they described it as lazy or sloppy, where you have this user information being shared, like the way I would perhaps message you, right. you know, at work, um, but in these groups of more than a thousand people um, with quite sensitive stuff. Right. How much better do we think other social media companies are about this, this side of it? Which is to say, it may be safe insofar as it's sitting on some server somewhere, you know, at Facebook. But then are there people inside Facebook or other or TikTok or, or, or um, Twitter or other places that have access to things and people share it back and forth for other reasons? I think this is probably uh, something of an issue across social media companies. Um, but from the people we talked to, they said that TikTok, of course, is maybe a little bit less mature in these areas. They don't have quite as much experience operating here. And of course, there's the element that they're storing this information uh, from what we understand in servers in China. And so the other piece yeah, they of the keep saying they're not. Well, like, are they or are they not? Like, we the know that as of late last year, they were storing uh, the LARC data in China. Yeah. We asked TikTok repeatedly to answer, you know, where is it stored now? Is it specifically in China? And they ignored the question. So okay. We should say, by the way, because uh, CNBC reached out to TikTok. This is a spokesperson who responded to the Times story. Uh, if I could read that uh, statement, I think we have, have that. Uh, can we put it on the screen? Uh, saying that the dated, they, they call them dated documents mm -hmm. um, from the Times story, neither accurately depicts how we handle protected uh, U.S. user data nor the progress we've made under Project Texas. When Project Texas is complete, they say all communications involving protected U.S. user data will occur on a separate platform that is controlled, monitored, and accessible only by uh, U.S., uh, I assume USDs, which are the U.S., our effort to delete historical U.S. protected data is well underway and expected to be completed this year. The large LARC groups were shut down last year after reviewing internal concerns. We evaluated those concerns and have since implemented several mitigating controls, and you reported a lot of those comments. What were they doing with driver's licenses? So How did they even get driver's licenses? A lot of this was through troubleshooting, through accounts having issues, and in the process of that, these users would upload their passports, their driver's licenses, and and make other. You know, so people, reports. this isn't people uploading their. I was thinking to myself because you don't have to upload your driver's license or any of those things to get onto TikTok. No. This is this is. I'm shut out of my account. I get in touch with customer service, and I to, to prove who I am, I, I send you a shot of my driver's license, and then that driver's license is now sitting on somebody's email That's server. That's the only way you can get back in if you get shut out. Well, I, don't, I don't know, but I'm just, but. but that, that seems to be what was happening in this case. And, and so the, the idea is that right. that driver's license, because it was, it was sent to some customer service person, mm -hmm. is now living 
on some server, in this case, the Lark server, and which China, happens to also be in China. With right. the Communist Party right. overlooking and overseeing that. Yeah, and that's the that's the difference here is it wasn't sort of submitted as a ticket somewhere. When you think of kind of a customer service process here, it seems in you know the documents we saw that the driver's license was shared. It made its way onto a Lark group, uh, like this kind of internal Slack chat with you know, thousands of people with employees in China interacting with it, and then it was simply stored there um, because it seems the the people we talked to who accessed it were able to access it as of right. last year. We had, a, we had a guest earlier this week who was defending TikTok and other social media companies, but particularly TikTok against the Montana law, just pointing out that you can't just decide you hate a company. And that's probably true. I think Montana lawmakers know that this is a weak law. And if they had still had the legislature in session, they probably would amend this law to try and make it not just TikTok specific. But they could say any company that is basically overseen by the Chinese Communist Party would have to follow separate rules or not be allowed here. I mean, you don't have to say just TikTok. You don't pick it out because we would just say, okay, any company that's basically owned by the Chinese Party, mm -hmm. the Chinese Communist Party would, would have to go along with some of these rules. Is that what you think we'll end up seeing as a result of what you've uncovered with things? Um, potentially. I think this is just playing out in, in really unexpected right. ways. And so it's really hard to tell what's going to happen next. Do you believe ultimately that you could separate it? I mean, that's always been the question, meaning that you could separate it and the stuff could literally live on U.S. servers in an audited fashion and people feel good about that? I think that, I mean, that's the challenge, right, for right. TikTok and ByteDance is convincing the U.S. that they can credibly do that. Right, but now that you know what you know, do you, do you, have, do you have a view? I think that our story reflects how complicated and challenging this effort is right. and the many ways uh, in which they're going to have to prove the credibility here.